All right, here we go again. We are going to be hammering down into a wiring video, and I do not want to be doing this, but it's for you guys. So, leaving off from the last video, the harness and everything was basically tucked up in the engine bay, and we figured out that the harness has to be extended to go through the firewall because, and the GE VVTIs, the ECU sits in the engine bay behind the headlight, and naturally it's just not long enough to reach behind the head and go around to the passenger side and through the firewall. So each of these wires has to be extended. So the longest wire I will be extending up to I think 28 inches, and then I will extend the rest of it to the length that this one is going to. So every single one of these wires will have an extension. I'll be obviously doing heat wrap and everything else so that way it stays nice so that is the plan and i will do my best to film this and to show you guys how to properly do this uh, like i said before this is a lot harder and everyone makes it seem a lot harder than it actually is and it really is not that hard you just got to understand what you're looking at so this might look like it's pretty crazy but it's not and i will go over everything with you guys so to start off typically i go in order with these here so i would normally you know start on the top pin of the connectors and when you look at a pin out you're always looking towards the back of the connector it will be going into the sensor so in this case it will be as if you're looking into the ecu so you're looking through the back of the connector right here the diagram shows you that's the vacuum sensor on the map some map sensor into the vacuum, the nipple there. So you would typically just go in order here and pin them all. But in my case, since I started to pin this to a mega squirt, I have had to cut it. So I'm just going to be going off of the wires that I'm grabbing. So we are going to be starting with the cam and crank sensors. Uh, these are pretty important. With this, there are two that are a sensor ground. These will be the only sensors on the engine that go to that. And the sensor ground will be pin 18 on the black connector. This is a very important one. You do not want to ground these to the chassis or a common ground. This must be sensor ground or else it will not run. Cam sync one and primary trigger will be the ones that you pin the cam and crank sensor to. Crank sensor going to the primary. Cam sync is the cam sensor. All right guys, when you're going to use one of these pins and you crimp it, you don't need that much wire showing. It just has to be just enough to get into the second portion here. So this second piece, the lower end that will crimp down, that is the part that crimps against the actual bare wire. The first piece is what crimps around the electric or the shielding of the wire. So you'll just run it in just like this. Make sure it's like that and then this is what you get so this is a well now it's being a shared it's a shared union so the shared union is for the sensor ground so here we are looking at the pinout and whenever you guys are looking at the connectors you have to make sure that the locking portion, the mechanism for the actual connector here is always facing away. So just like this, don't accidentally do them like this because they do not work. They are always like this and then they lock into place. They come off. So got the retainer off and we are going to be looking at Sensor ground, which is pin 18. These are color coded, so it's very, very nice, but they're also numbered. So 17 bottom left, 18 is directly the one next to it. So you will take your wires that you just pinned up and you will just slide it right through and you will hear an audible click. It won't be that loud but it'll be enough that you can hear it. Once you get these in there, these will not fall out. The Mega Squirt ones would actually fall out, but there's a little clip. Let's see if I can't show you guys. I don't know if I can. Um, okay, right there you can see it. It's a little bit of a glimmer right above the silver. 
it is a little clip and you can see them along the rest of it and like those little clips you got to flip them up with like a flathead a tiny flathead and then while you flip it up you can pull the wire and it'll come out so with that we have our first two wires pinned for the sensor grounds for the cam and the crank and i will come right back with the next ones when you are actually going through to do your wiring you want to triple quadruple extra check everything so in my case since i'm extending them i'm doing the best i can with an excessive amount of wiring that i have that i've deleted from many different engines so i'm able to find the similar colors and same setups so in my case here i do have a green to green but you always want to make sure that you check the color and make sure that when you get up to the actual sensor itself the connector it's got the same color in this case the cam sensor is actually a green wire for the signal and the crank is a white and black but my white and black wire is actually switched over to a blue and red wire so i have to work with what i have but it will still function the same um, on the jay-z's the gr the giant green shielded wiring they will always be your main engine running sensors and the blue ones which is right here those are the knock sensors so just a little tip for that for those of you that are interested in doing this now whenever i was saying that this is a uh, kind of hard to understand what you're looking at at first but if you see here you've got your connector and you got your two wires that you put in you know what wires you put in okay these are my sensor grounds so you'll just know that you put those in there now when you get the next one in there you're going to know that you put that one in there you're going to know that those are the two wires that you put in there and you know what those wires are going to now once you get through the entire engine harness and you got them all pinned in there you're going to have a 300 percent extra understanding of how wiring works and you'll have knowledge of how everything was pinned and you'll know where everything goes all right so we got the cam sensor we're going to be going down here to the cam sync one and it will be pin 15 on the black connector so here we got 16 in the middle we'll go one to the left of 16 on the middle so right here on the back here's number 16 we're going to go just to the left of it and that will be your cam sensor for the ecu master classic just like before you'll slide her through there and you'll listen for an audible click well this one didn't make a click but you'll know that it's in there when you can see that it's kind of surface leveled with the face of this so now you've got sensor ground and cam sensor you are starting to somewhat resemble a wiring harness but you still have a few more wires you need to pin in there. A lot of this is going to be basically uh, very simple. So a lot of these stock sensors and everything, they're just a bunch of bulk. So a lot of things that are turned on by the key or you you know have automatic climate control, things like that are gonna be running different sensors to you know be able to adjust your automatic climate and everything else for your car. So when you're doing something like this there's a lot of stuff that's not needed and a lot of stuff that's deleted so this wiring harness is not going to look like much when you're finished okay next we got the primary trigger it will be pin number seven on the black connector it will be one to the left of the number eight port and it will be directly above the cam sensor so the crank sensor will be just to the left of the top right pin again same deal Okay, so since I have a basis of how long my harness is going to be now, I do have an extension. I will just be going through the line here and extending the wires as I go, just because it's a lot easier to go through here instead of just pick one wire at a time through the harness. All right, we've got knock sensor number one. That is literally the second pin on the black connector. So black connector, second pin, and through and clipped there are now four wires five technically in here and you can start to understand that your wiring harness is being made next we'll be looking at the coolant temp and that is a red wire going into the sensor and the sensor will always be a bright yellow face find it oh shouldn't up right here here is the coolant temp 
and this one has a red wire. The other wire is a common ground, and that is a lot of the time going to be the way it is for most of these sensors. The common ground will bolt to the manifold. Pin four, first line, so it will be the fourth one across. It is the green one, so it's easy to decipher here. Fourth pin across the top, right here. All right, there's a lot of these that we'll be skipping because I'm not to that point yet. So the coils, I will not be doing. Uh, keep in mind, I do not actually have them in here at the moment, but these are, there are two separate sizes uh, on the connector here. There are the big ones on the outside and then there's smaller ones on the inside. All the big ones are going to be anything that have to send current. So you'll have the coils, and then all grounds. Uh, the one 12 volt that will be used is actually pin 18 on the gray connector. And it is the second one from the bottom. You can see right here and then up here. That is the only 12 volts on the entire thing. Everything else is being powered. Uh, everything else is grounded. All the power will not be going through the ECU, uh, just like regular ECUs. The power will be coming from a fuse box or any kind of switched power. It'll have its own 12 volt system. So your injectors and your coils will have its own 12 volt. These here, where it says the coils on the outside, that will actually be the signal that the ECU sends to fire the coils. So the coils will already have grounds and the coils will already have 12 volts. The only thing that's gonna be missing is the signal to go ahead and shoot a spark. And that is what these are for. All right, so knock sensor number two, it's going to be pin 10, which is directly below knock sensor number one. So pin 10 will be pinned directly underneath. All right, so the very next thing we're gonna be doing is the TPS. And on the TPS, there are actually four wires. One of the wires is a ground, so it's a common ground. The other is something for the stock ECU. Then the other two is a five volt supply. And then the actual sensor that allows you your ECU to read uh, voltage. So it transfers it to a zero to 100%. All right, so we're gonna be pinning the five volt supply, which is just to the left of the final pin on the harness. So we'll be going to the bottom and just to the left. Next, we're gonna be doing the injectors and I am actually just going off the wiring that I have here and I'm pulling the wiring through the loom and seeing which injectors it pulls on. Uh, this current one is injector number five. Injector number five is pin 14 on the gray connector. We are moving over to the gray connector. Pin 14 is two to the left of 16, which is the middle. So we've got 16, 15, 14, and just like all the others, it's a slide in and click. You can leave these in to push the wiring through. You just have to take it out in order to pull them out. Next will be injector number three. Injector number three is pin 23. It'll be just to the left of the ground pin at the very bottom. Next, we'll be doing injector number two. It'll be beside injector number five. So, right here in the middle. Injector number two and five. Next, we'll be pinning injector number one, and number one will be next to number four on the top row. And the final injector will be injector number six, and that will be pinned right down here on the bottom and pin number 22 beside injector number three. All right guys, so we've got a change of scenery now. Uh, I've got the wiring harness, the ECU, and basically everything. We're out here directly working on the car now because I'm going to have to have direct lengths for everything. Uh, I did wire his coils and I do have a video on the coils. I know I said I was gonna record this, but uh, he's got two days before prom and he wants the car for that. So the coils are very, very simple. The pin, you can see they're listed on here. Uh, there we, let's see if I can, there we go. Pin number A, <laughs> number L, pin letter A, it, on every single one, that will go to the ECU. B is for a ground, C is a cylinder head ground, D is another ground, and E is 12 volt. 
So your 12 volt is obviously 12 volt. The white wire for the C pin, 100% has to go to the cylinder head. That's supposed to reduce noise. And then the other two, they're supposed to go to your battery, but on the white car, I've always grounded them to the cylinder head or to the firewall. You can see on this, I've got these, let me see if I can't find it right quick. Should be here somewhere. There, there. So these are my cylinder head ground. I actually wired them out a little bit longer so I can just bolt it to the side of the head on the outside. And then this is a chassis ground that I made. And then the other chassis ground. Uh, and then this is my 12 volt that goes directly to the battery, which I made because I was thinking there was an issue with my voltage and stuff and ended up being my TPS just incorrectly reading and it was dropping off under a load and that was all been resolved so everything has been good from there. But right now what we are going to be doing is wiring the other end of these coils so I will be using the Deutz connector for the other end and it will be an extension to go along the harness to the ECU so that way everything is detachable and you don't have to pull the coils off every single time which is a very convenient thing so just like I was describing before the only thing that's left on these coils or on or on these connectors are going to be the big pins and just for reference here I should have the, the little ones also so these are the big ones and then these are the little ones. So you can see the difference, it's pretty big. So make sure you guys don't accidentally pin the little pins onto the wires, because all the coils and the grounds will be going to this. The 12 volt is different. It is on the gray connector, it is pin 18, and it will go, obviously, pin 18, second to the left. It's a ground, there's another ground, and then there's actually four grounds. There's three power grounds and then an ECU ground, and I will just ground those directly to the chassis on the inside. Whenever I was doing my wiring for the, my Silver Supra, I grounded my ECU ground with my sensors, and that was a bad idea. There was a lot of noise, and there was very unclear readings in the IAT and the TPS. Things were uh, fluctuating really, really bad. So make sure you guys just just ground those four things to the chassis. Ignore the fact that it says ECU ground. It's just saying like that is the ground for the ECU that will be powering the actual ECU. Uh, and then the other power grounds are going to be for the actual sensors getting signals and stuff. So there's just a lot of grounds. Grounds are very important. We're going to be starting with the black connector. There's going to be ignition coil five and four on the black connector and the rest will be on the gray connector. So the way this works is you will pin them exactly the same way that I showed you with the injectors. Cylinder one in the front, you'll be starting with that. Coil one will go to ignition coil one and so forth. Do not mix them up. If you mix them up, it's not a big deal. You don't have to repin them if you don't want to. You can just change the settings in ECU master. All right, so one of the most important things I actually forgot to mention about this, uh, and unless you're running the same kind of mounts that I'm running, where I run solid mounts, which are complete ground points, the biggest and most important thing on any engine are grounds. The more the merrier, it allows for faster uh, transfer of signals, and if you don't have them, obviously you're not gonna get 12 volt anyways, and it's just going to be very poor. So it does turn over now, as Lane will show you, and he's excited as hell. So it is going to be ready to start in just a moment, actually. And I probably could just go get the laptop and start it with the ECU sitting right there. But Lane is ecstatic, and I, he's probably gonna literally freak out when it's actually running, so. For the final bit here, coils are finished. So they do plug in all the way. Now that it turns over, it should be good to go. So coil wiring and everything. I do have to do the final, I think I, did I even put those on there yet? No, I gotta do the 12 volt and then the grounds. And then this one here, gotta do the 12 volts on the interior. And then I gotta ground these to the chassis for the ECU. And then I'll be able to flash a tune, adjust the tune a little bit and be good to go. All right here, 
got to find the other end of this wideband and then I got to actually plug in the auxiliary input from the wideband that he's using and put it into the ECU so that way I can read the actual air fuel ratio here in a moment. Send it, bub. Did I give a gas? Is that okay? No, it's super rich. Okay. Okay, do it again. Okay. I gave it gas. Huh? I gave it gas to make okay. it start. Yeah, don't give it gas. Alright, hold on. I think I might want to adjust that. No, it was rich as hell. That was... All right. All right, guys. So after a little bit of experimenting and trying to figure out what was going on, I decided to grab the ECU out of rice box and my tune fired it right up. And my tune is actually tuned on E85 and you guys can hear it's not exactly perfect. Um, simply because it's just not right, but it is running and it does rev. Huh? They don't even know. Well guys, the NAT MK3 is officially running. The wiring and everything is all all good we got to do some wrap on it and stuff it's all bare right now but it's freaking freaking awesome all right guys so lane just left he is so freaking excited uh, he's so stressed really it really looks like he's just super stressed because he is getting he, they wanted me to help them get this car finished by prom so prom is tomorrow uh saturday from the date of this video which i filmed on a friday so so the intercooler piping, and then he's just going to get the car cleaned up pretty good. Uh, we're going to take it out for a drive, and I'm going to finish up the drivability tune for him. The MK3, the NAT 2JZ GE non-VBTI bottom end with a GE VBTI head. R154, NAT Supra now runs, and it is running on my tune from Ricebox which is pretty freaking sweet. It started and fired right up whenever I started getting it. I apologize for not filming right away whenever I fired it up. But yes, I'm going to clean up the floorboard here. And oh, it's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. There you go, guys. So I'm going to end this video being the wiring video. Remember... Wiring is not that big of a deal. You start with one wire and you end up with a cluster of wires, but you somewhat pretty well know where everything goes. One wire at a time and you end up with a whole harness and the car now runs with that harness. No modifications were needed. It was just a run and gun. She worked, no problem at all. But that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it helped you guys get through your wiring menace sometimes it's a freaking pain in the butt sometimes it's not but i hope it did help you and i will catch you guys in the next one later